The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN, Worldwide Broadcasting Network, production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast here at the Horseshoe Ranch by Yosemite in California. This acreage was once a stagecoach stop during the great gold rush of 1849. And during that gold rush, food became so scarce that eggs were selling, listen to this price, eggs were selling for $10 a dozen. And $10 was worth much more at that time. It's a fact of history. Some things are valuable only because people want them. Other things people want because they are valuable. There's a difference between the two, the distinction between intrinsic and extrinsic values, between something which is good in and of itself and something which is only good in relation to something else. The will of God is intrinsically, inherently good, to be wanted because of its value. And God has a will for your life. God loves you. God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your existence. Professor Houston Smith defined religion as man's attempt to achieve the highest possible good by adjusting his life to the strongest and best power in the universe. This power, he wrote, is usually called God. But think one step beyond the statement that by religion man adjusts his life to God, as Professor Houston Smith said it. But God also, in a sense, adjusts himself to you. Not only does God beckon you to come to him, God also comes to you. God has given a divine spark, a fragment of infinity, of God's very being, to indwell your mind, to lead and guide your life. It is written, the kingdom of God is within you. The way some religious people try to avoid doing anything evil is by the philosophy that they're going to avoid doing anything at all, anything whatever. But Jesus of Nazareth was a man of action. And the living God wants to put your life into vital, dynamic action. The spiritual life should be rich in power and diversity. In Jesus' time, Jewish leaders were opposed to most forms of popular amusement, especially to those which brought delight to the Greco-Roman world. But in contrast to the rabbis, Jesus apparently uttered no word of protest against the sports of the stadium and the amphitheater, which rivaled the attractions of the Jewish temple. The Apostle Paul's many references to athletics are richly suggestive and indicate that one of Jesus' greatest followers found in these sports much innocent delight, everything which tended in a wholesome way to enlarge life and to develop personality also received his approval, even though it might have been condemned by the religious leaders of his time and his place. Jesus enjoyed life. He said, I've come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. There are two words which express two ideals. The concept of amusement, a right ideal and a wrong. One is recreation. Is your amusement a recreation, something which literally recreates, that's the meaning of the word, which recreates you, makes a new person of you, reinforces your mental and your physical and spiritual energies, and sends you back with fresh zest to the strenuous business of living your life. That's a good thing. The other word is mere pastime. If your amusement is just a pastime, something to pass the time to while away the weary, unprofitable hours of your life, then that amusement is futile and ruinous and unworthy of immortals traveling, in Abraham Cowley's phrase, across this weak-built isthmus between two eternities, the eternity whence you have come and the eternity whither you are going, and where with every breath, with every pulse beat, every ticking of the clock, you are drawing nearer and nearer. The story is told of St. Francis de Sales, that he was once playing a game of chess with a young man when a morose religious leader came strolling by on the scene and began to criticize and upbraid St. Francis de Sales for engaging in so vain an amusement as playing chess. What would you do, said this religious leader, if it were told to you that the Lord himself would presently appear in this place? The old saint slowly replied, I would finish playing this game of chess for it was to God's glory that I began it. That is the issue, that whatever you do, you do to the glory of God, because what you spend your time doing will in part define what you will become in your life, in your character in the springtime. 
Look at a little heap of rubbish, sticks, grass, corn cobs, an old bottle, a rubber shoe, lying there on the ground. It's all that's left of a snowball which the children rolled up in the winter time. They started it by pressing together a big handful of snow, and then they kept this ball going. They rolled it across the snow. It gathered up its own materials, and before long it was so big they could scarcely look over the top of it. Whatever that snowball rolled through, there it gathered its material. Part of it was snow, but much of it was this other rubbish. How much of it was rubbish, the children didn't know at the time, of course, but the bright sunshine of springtime would lay bare everything which had gone into that winter snowball. Wherever you go, you gather up what makes you what you are and who you are in the end. If your pathway leads to bad companionship, selfishness, cruelty, hatred, dissipation, then you are gathering into your character, into your life, the corn cobs and rusty nails and bottles and shoes and rubbish. You are gathering things that reek with weakness and will bring you shame in your life. What is it that you're making of your life? The choice is yours. The decision is yours. Are you just collecting trash? Or are you gathering into yourself experiences replete with goodness and truth and beauty and love for God and love for others? Said Jesus, be you therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, and your life will touch other lives. There were four professors once discussing the merits of the various different translations which have been made of the Bible. One of these professors said he liked the King James Version best because of its stately, beautiful English. Another said he liked the Revised Version of 1881 best because of its literal and accurate translation of the original Hebrew and Greek texts. The third, James Moffat's translation for its up-to-date vocabulary. And a fourth just sat there at the table silent. When at last he was asked to express his opinion, he replied, I liked my mother's translation of the scriptures the very best. The other professors registered some surprise. I didn't know your mother translated the Bible. One of them said, yes, came the reply. She translated it into her life every day she lived, and it was the most convincing translation which I ever saw. Spiritual truth is not just some abstract theory. It's something you can not only think about, it's something you can live out in your life day by day. Said Jesus, live fearlessly, live in faith. Some people worry about everything that happens everywhere in the world. There are other people who don't worry about anything that happens in the world as long as it happens to somebody else. But the man or woman of faith is a person greatly concerned about what does happen in the world. He or she simply refuses to sit and stew and be nervous and worry about it, knowing that worrying too much about a problem can keep you from doing too much about that problem. You need to use every ounce of energy, which you would waste in being nervous and fearful and worried about your troubles, to solve those troubles, to deal with those problems, to live as the son or daughter of God you were born to be and live fearlessly, fearless of life and fearless of death. There is dawning upon this planet a spiritual renaissance. But how can this spiritual renaissance change the world? Well, think for a moment. How could a spiritual awakening transform this planet? Think for a moment of the most kind, good, loving person you have ever known in all your life. Take a moment to reflect. Think of some really good person, the best person you have ever known. And then take a moment more to imagine what it would be like if every person upon this planet, if everybody were like that, if everybody were like that best person, most loving, cheerful, joyous, compassionate, forgiving, merciful, helpful, good person you have ever known. If everybody were like that, imagine how different the world would be if everybody on the planet loved and thought and behaved and acted and reacted like the best people you have ever known in your life. That's what a spiritual renaissance would be like. Every aspect of this world would be transformed. And that is how the spiritual renaissance is going to transform this world, beginning here and now, if you will have it so, beginning with you, if you will give your life to the God who gave you your life originally. A man or woman ought to live his or her life not merely as he or she pleases, but as he or she pleases God. That is the supreme decision, to do the will of God, to want to be what God wants you to be. And remember, God is omnipotent. 
That means God is all-powerful. That means with God, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. God can do anything. Ponder that. God can do anything. God can do anything at all in this universe. God can also do anything at all in your life. God can do anything at all in your family. God can do anything, whatever, in your job. God can do anything in your future of your life. If you will only have the faith, if you will only have the faith, said Jesus, have faith in God. Things need not remain as they are, and you need not remain as you are, because God can do anything. With God, all things are possible. With God, nothing absolutely, nothing is impossible, and you are a son or daughter of God, and God has good things planned and purposed for you. I call you to give your life to God, not because giving your life to God will give you peace and power and purpose in living, although all of these things will result, peace and power and purpose and joy in your life, these will result, but that's not why I call you to give your life to God. I call you to give your life to God this moment, listening somewhere on this planet, wherever you are listening to this broadcast, to give your life to God because God is God, because God intrinsically, inherently, is worthwhile, is the infinite reality, the source of all values, greatly to be worshipped, greatly to be praised, even if there were nothing whatever in it for you. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. That will get you out of yourself, out of this endless self-analysis, this repetitious redundant remorse of looking back over all the things you've done wrongly or things you haven't done that you wish you had done in the past, whatever it may be which beleaguers and bedevils you, realize that this moment right here and now is a fresh start, a new start for your life. That you may be reborn spiritually. That's what renaissance means. A spiritual renaissance is renaissance, rebirth rebirth in your soul, your heart, your sense of joy and meaning and purpose. Everything will become new because you yourself will become new on the inside. Be you not conformed to this world, it is written, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you will, that may begin for you right here, right now, this very moment. And then write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. We have free literature on these things, on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. What happens when you pray? What good does it do to pray? How do you pray? Write for all this. No cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address. That's Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 936 44 United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>